8 Mistakes That Kill Your Thyroid. In this video, I'll explain the worst mistakes that ruin your thyroid health. What's true and what's a lie? I'm an endocrinologist, a specialist in the thyroid. I've been treating people with thyroid disease for many years, so I can tell you what's a myth and what's not. Let's start descending. Mistake number 8 is believing myths about the thyroid. I'll explain the main myths here. First, eating cauliflower or broccoli could harm the thyroid. It's a lie. There is no scientific evidence that eating cruciferous vegetables could cause any damage to your thyroid, such as goiter or hormonal imbalances. This came about because there was a study in rats. Rats that only ate broccoli or cauliflower developed goiter, which is an enlarged thyroid, and also had hormonal imbalances. But this didn't happen in humans, so you can comfortably eat broccoli or cauliflower without worry because it's not going to affect your thyroid. Or even believe that brushing your teeth with fluoride toothpaste could affect your thyroid. There's also no scientific evidence. It's unfounded. Ah, but isn't fluoride bad for the thyroid? Sure, if you eat toothpaste, then you will have problems. But the act of brushing your teeth, that amount of fluoride, won't affect your thyroid. Some phony experts claim that fluoride could compete with iodine and cause hormonal problems. But it doesn't happen in practice with this brushing amount, okay? It won't happen to you. And the third myth, which is also very common, is that swimming in a pool could harm the thyroid because of the chlorine. The same story as with fluoride. If you eat pure chlorine, then you'll have a lot of problems. But taking a shower, for example, you don't need to install a shower filter to remove chlorine like many, many people have told me, okay? Swimming in the pool is the same. The proof of this is that swimmers, swimming instructors, they have the same risk of developing a thyroid disease as anybody else. So that dose of chlorine from the pool isn't going to harm you, okay? This is a myth circulating on the internet. Of course, if you eat toothpaste or ingest chlorine, you're going to have a problem, so don't do that. Because these myths, besides not being harmful to your thyroid, are bad for your mental health. You may think, darn, I can't do anything. Everything damages the thyroid. And that's not exactly the case, okay? So don't believe it. You can lead a normal life, eat cruciferous vegetables, eat what you like. There's no such thing as a thyroid-specific diet, okay? Could any tea potentially harm the thyroid? No. There is no tea that can improve thyroid function, nor any that can harm or induce thyroid diseases. Ah, but my doctor said I should avoid certain types of tea. This happens because in some stages of treatment, for instance, if someone already has a diagnosis of a certain disease, the doctor may advise you to avoid certain substances. Let me give you an example. Last week, I saw a patient with hypothyroidism. They were in that stage with excess thyroid hormones. I diagnosed them last week. I also advise them to avoid black tea, caffeine, for instance, because they already had many symptoms, such as rapid heartbeat. If they consume other substances like black tea or caffeine, which can cause such symptoms, it could exacerbate the symptoms. The same principle applies in reverse. If the patient has very low levels of thyroid hormones and already has symptoms like excessive sleepiness, for instance, at this stage, the doctor might advise avoiding certain teas, like fennel tea, chamomile tea, which can also induce sleepiness. Then you can exacerbate the symptoms. But it's not like chamomile tea or coffee would cause any changes to the thyroid. The second mistake is using Lugol as a form of supplementation. Lugol can not only fail to help, but it can cause diseases in your thyroid. And how does that happen and why? Lugol, for those who don't know, is iodine in a very clear way. Oh, but if I take a drop of iodine, a drop of Lugol has about 15-15% of 20 times what you need of iodine per day. If you take two drops, you're ingesting 30 times what you need of iodine. Oh, but what's the problem? Doesn't the thyroid need iodine? It does, but in the right quantity. So what happens? At first, you might have a slightly accelerated thyroid function, but over time, if you continue to use Lugol one, two drops a day, what we call saturation will happen and the thyroid can lose function. You may have hypothyroidism induced by Lugol. I see this quite often in practice, especially because there are several videos out there recommending Lugol. Don't believe that, okay? Ah, but Lugol is not useful in medicine. Because once Dr. Joao, who's speaking in the video, he prescribed Lugol for me. 
Yes, in some situations, like for example, the patient has hyperthyroidism and they're going to have thyroid surgery. In some cases, the doctor may prescribe Lugols to lower the risk of bleeding, for example. That's one of its uses. Uh, but when the patient has too many thyroid hormones, the so-called thyrotoxic crisis or thyrotoxic storm, they have to go to the hospital. They're feeling very bad. Their heart is racing. Their blood pressure is really high. They're even mentally confused. They have a lot of diarrhea. In this case, in the thyrotoxic crisis, along with other treatments, Lugols may also be indicated, always with medical supervision, of course. But you've seen that these situations are very far from supplementation for those who don't have any thyroid problems, okay? So supplementing with Lugol is a big mistake and it causes a lot of damage, yeah? If you've already used Lugol or been a victim of any of these videos, put it in the comments. And I'll like your comment to put it in the spotlight so more people can also see that this is true. If you're enjoying the video so far, I'm going to ask you to like it. Because that way the system understands that the video is relevant and starts spreading it to more people. Our goal is going to be 8,000 likes. 1,000 likes for every mistake I'm explaining to you here. Can we do it? So help me out and like the video too. I'm also going to invite you to subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. Click on the subscribe button and check all the options. Turn on the bell so that you'll be notified whenever I post. The third way to mess up your thyroid is to not take care of your diet. Some people are so worried about what not to do, like in the case of broccoli, you know it's a lie, and they end up forgetting about the minimum amount of nutrients that the thyroid needs, like iron, selenium, zinc, with a minimally balanced diet. Mind you, I'm not talking about an excellent diet, but a minimally balanced one with say two cashews a day. Two cashews already provide the minimum amounts of selenium and zinc that your thyroid needs. Ah, but is there a disease of the thyroid due to nutritional deficiency? It does exist, but it accounts for less than 5% of hypothyroidism cases, for example. Most of it is because of an autoimmune disease, like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, for example. But often the person only consumes stuffed cookies, soda, and fails to reach the minimum amount of nutrients and these hormonal dysfunctions start to emerge. So take care of your diet, take care of these nutrients I mentioned in the video, and you'll be doing your thyroid a favor. Mistake number four, which also damages your thyroid, is using the hormone levothyroxine without needing it. Many people, uh, I'm using T3 to activate my metabolism. I'm using T4 to try to lose weight. This is a serious mistake because your thyroid will get lazy. It's not a myth. It happens, and I'll explain why it happens. When you take thyroid hormones, your body recognizes it already has hormones and sends a signal to the pituitary gland, which controls the thyroid from a distance, and the pituitary gland no longer produces the necessary amounts of TSH for your body to produce on its own. And as the days and weeks pass, your thyroid becomes lazy and can even shrink in size. And often a person takes it for so long that even after you stop using the medication, it takes a long time for the thyroid to start working again at normal levels because it will really have become lazy. So don't use thyroid hormones for weight loss or metabolism enhancement like some coaches suggest because this will indeed cause a thyroid disease known as levothyroxine-induced hypothyroidism. The fifth way to harm your thyroid is to be overweight. Obesity has been linked to several types of cancer as a risk factor. Thyroid cancer is one of them. So if you're overweight, you should know it can also harm your thyroid. Weight control is one of the ways to lower your risk of thyroid cancer. Not just thyroid. Other types like breast cancer, prostate cancer, and bowel cancer also increase. So. Weight control is very important. The sixth way to harm your thyroid is by getting tested too early. This applies to those who already have a diagnosis of hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. If you're taking tapazole or the thyroid hormone levothyroxine, you need to wait a certain amount of time for the test to show changes. Since it's a hormonal test like TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, it takes a few weeks to actually show the results. So. It's no good, for example, if the doctor changes the dose of levothyroxine and you get tested next week or in the next few days. 
because the result will be false. And often, if you advance this time, the doctor gets the wrong idea that the treatment didn't work or the dose is too high or too low and ends up changing it. And often, the patient gets stuck on that seesaw. One time the dose is too high, another time it's too low. So at least the thyroid exam after the doctor changes or starts a treatment should be done four weeks later. In an ideal world, eight weeks, okay? Four weeks is when the patient is very symptomatic. But ideally, in eight weeks, the result is accurate, okay? So respect this time frame. Always directly ask the doctor when you should get your exam, okay? Because often you go in with a request, the lab calls you early, you think everything is fine and you just go ahead with it. So you need to have that guidance. Mistake number seven relates to undergoing tests while taking multivitamins. There are certain vitamins, for instance, biotin, vitamin B7, that can alter the thyroid tests. You don't have any thyroid issue. The vitamin won't cause that but the tests will have an error in them. For instance, vitamin B7, biotin, can decrease the TSH level and increase a hormone known as T. So you must be very careful if you are using that multivitamin, the multivitamins, especially for hair and nails. Ah, but what do I do then? The first thing is that you will always tell both the doctor and the laboratory what supplement you are using. Many times to avoid this interference, you will have to stop 72 hours before. For example, if you take vitamins for your hair, you will stop 72 hours before and then you will take the test so you don't have any false results. So rest assured that these vitamins won't cause a problem with your thyroid. It is a matter of interference with the exam that can have many consequences. For example, it has happened several times that I have referred patients who were taking vitamin B7, took the test while taking the vitamin, and are suspected of having hypothyroidism. And when I go to question, oh, I was taking this vitamin, then we confirm discontinuation. The patient repeats it's normal. Just imagine if I only considered this result without asking and prescribe medication needlessly, thus triggering a thyroid disease the patient has, okay? So be careful with multivitamins. And mistake number eight is blaming the thyroid unnecessarily. This is a very common mistake. Why? Because many people who already have a thyroid problem or are investigating one, any symptom that appears, ah, no, it's the thyroid's fault. Ah, I can't lose weight because my thyroid is working slowly. Guys, once you're in treatment, for example, using medication, your hormones are normal, your thyroid shouldn't give you any symptoms, okay? You need to improve completely. In practice, patients often have symptoms but don't investigate them because they think it's their thyroid's fault. Many times other situations, deficiencies or diseases cause these symptoms and because patients think it's their thyroid, they don't investigate. This is very common. They have other changes in their metabolism and blame the thyroid. So if your tests are normal, don't blame your thyroid. From 0 to 10, what rating do you give this video? If it's 10, I'll make more videos like it. Also, write in the comments which city you're watching this video from and what part of the world you're from. I'm from Porto Alegre. Now I'm going to leave a suggestion for you to watch. It's a video where I talk about the liver. Do you know the worst mistakes that harm your liver? The 10 worst habits? Just like with the thyroid, there are many myths, truths and lies. In this video here, I explain the worst habits for the liver. One hug. See you next time.